When considering infinite banking, most people think that buying themselves a policy, an insurance policy, is going to be a big expense, and they have to put a lot of money into it. So the question is whether or not it's an asset to have an insurance policy for infinite banking or it's a liability. Let's dive right in. When we think about this question, we are going to research it kind of meditate on it from the aspect of rich dad, poor dad. I think that's probably a pretty universal way to look at something. How does an asset put money in my pocket? If it does not, we might be confusing that with a liability. Those are the two things that he distinctly outlines in those definitions that are pretty universal and standard. Does an asset bring dollars your direction? If so, or maybe it appreciates in value, then that's going to be a good thing for you, right? And a liability is something that takes money away from you or costs you money or makes the money go down in your life. So let's take a look at his income statement and let's decide whether or not his income statement and balance sheet illustration is going to help us decide on whether or not banking, infinite banking, Life insurance is for you. Take a look right here at poor people. He distinctly goes through poor people, middle class, and the rich. Poor people have a job, a J-O-B, a just over broke, a jump over backward. Who knows how you define it, but that's going to provide them some dollars. Maybe it's a salary for them. So that's on the income statement right here on the left-hand side. Okay, so we've got income on the left-hand side in the top most box. And we have expenses right here in the bottom most box, both here on the left side. And of course, people have to pay rent and they've got food and they've got taxes to the gub mint as well as clothes. We got to get around. So we've got transportation, transportation. All right. So what we have here is the money comes in through the J-O-B and then it goes right out and then it is gone. It goes right down to zero. That's on the left most side. And see, when we get over here to the balance sheet side, that's going to show us our assets and our liabilities. And we don't have to spend very much time on there because we don't have any. If you are in the mindset of a consumer only, and you're not going to get into things that continually cost you money or cost you more than that one-time transaction, like rent and food and taxes, then you don't have any liabilities, let's say. And you definitely don't have any assets. Nothing is bringing you money without your time, effort, and energy. That's what your job is for. And that's over, over here on the left-hand side. Well, the income statement, this is how I grew up, of course. I'd get my allowance and mom would hand me dollars. And when, when she did, I went straight to the uh, toy store. I went straight to the arcade and the uh, in the 90s, and I went straight to the card shop buying baseball cards and basketball cards. So those were just expenses, and my money was gone. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at what the middle class does, okay? Remember, on our path to figuring out whether or not whole life insurance is the way to go, we're going to take a look at now our income on the top left corner, and we've got a J-O-B once again bringing us an hourly salary or a wage. And it doesn't matter now if we're making $10 an hour or $10,000 a day, we're probably making more money. Now we have expenses just like everyone else. Remember the expenses are similar like food and like taxes, but see, before we got into our expenses, we probably went over here to the liability side. Let's put some liabilities over here because normally once our income rises in the middle class, we have now bought things that Robert Kiyosaki would say, we often think are actually assets, but are really liabilities. And the big one that he challenged everybody on at the beginning and everybody got up in arms is our ho home, our personal residence, our mortgage. We've now got credit cards. We've got cars and loans on those cars. And we've got school. A lot of times we went to school. That's why we are middle class because we went and now have some sort of J-O-B or salary. 
See, these things are costing us money each and every month. Take a look at them right again. Now that we're in the middle class, what we've got here is liabilities of a house and credit cards and car notes and school loans, all those types of things are coming out of our pocket each and every month as expenses. So see, we are now in the middle class where things look nicer and they drive a little faster and maybe we're a little sharper, a little bit smarter, but by financially, uh, financial speak, we don't have a better education because now we are required to work harder to pay for all the things that we've now purchased. Those things are continually costing us money and they've got interest on them that we must pay to third parties in most cases. That's the middle class and that's where most people end. Low class, poor, middle class. We've covered 95% of people, according to Rich, Flo, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad's cash flow quadrant, 95% of people are here. So what's the difference? That's where the rich people lie. Let's go take a look at them now. And let's be reminded that our experience around whole life insurance is going to be aided by how things flow in this category. We've got income. I think we remember how this works. We've got expenses. Of course, things that are sure are death and taxes. Isn't that what they say? So we're going to put taxes over there. We've got assets over here on the balance sheet side. And we've got liabilities. Let's actually start with the assets. I'm going to put things that bring money to us, real estate, what about stocks, potentially? Bonds, notes. Maybe even IP or intellectual property or a business or business system that a rich person may own or control. That's an asset now, and these things are the things now that bring us income. So now we've got rental income because we have real estate perhaps we've got dividends he talks about maybe because of our stocks we've got interest because of our notes and we may even have royalties or um, distributions because of our businesses See, the things that we own or control, the assets over here on the balance sheet side, on the left-hand side of it, those things are bringing us income each and every month or each and every year, each and every quarter. Those things are more important than our personal time and effort going into all the energy that it takes to bring us income. And so now we're thinking like a wealthy person. See, I always want to relate it to the Walton family. The Waltons own Walmart. Sam Walton started it, and now his wife Alice, I believe, and four of the five kids that are left living, they own the system. If you own the system and are worth $40 billion, you probably don't work at Walmart. And you probably don't shop at Walmart either. See, they own something that's an asset that brings them dividends. It brings them profits. And that goes into the income column for them. And then their income can take care of their liabilities. I mean, you got to live somewhere. So now let's take a look again. We've got that mortgage. We've got loans on consumer products. We've got credit cards, potentially. Those things are still a part of our life, perhaps. But see, our income from our assets are taking care of it. And then we can pay our expenses as well. See, our expenses are taken care of from our assets. So here's the question as we wrap things up. Whole life insurance utilized as a bank, is it an expense? I talk to people all the time on free cash consultations here at the Cash Compound on, on yikes, how much do I have to put in? How much do I have to pay? And I'm thinking, I think you need to realize the first thing we need to do is place our money like rich people rich thinkers, educated financial people into assets, things that bring us money. See, every dollar that goes inside whole life insurance is guaranteed to grow in cash flow for us, giving us and kicking off new income tax-free dollars that we can leverage. And now we can take that to our income statement, except of course it's not taxable. So we are going to put as many of our dollars that come into our life into the safest, most guaranteed, rising in equity place to kick off dollars to take care of 
all the other things we want to do. Therefore, it can take care of our mortgage and our car loans and our student loans because money is coming in and flowing from this asset. Our dollars go in, all dollars stay there, and each new month or each new year, our dollars are stacked on the old dollars, giving us new cash value totals, a separate pool of money that we can use to pay our bills. And that separate pool of money grows and, of course, is income tax-free. So we're just going to get bigger and better and faster and stronger and last longer through this system. So if you understand that, you need to pay yourself first. Not pay the car, student loan people, as well as the mortgage, but pay yourself first. Put your dollars in that asset and it can't be taken away from you. The dollars that you have now that you make today will always be with you. They'll pay out for your family in a future death benefit later income tax free, but we're going to utilize them now to take care of our liabilities and our expenses. It's time to think like a rich person. Pay yourself first, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to have a conversation about that, or maybe even qualify a certain life insurance policy you already have and aren't sure about it, give us a call. Link in bio. We'll talk soon. Gave a lot of game, we never got a lot of things. Bow your head and say the prayer, we taught you how to be the bank.